Okay, now I've used clone stamp. I've used a merged layer. And did dodging and burning, and that made a big difference. It looked like this before when I started. So these finishing techniques, like I say, it's like painting the car once it's completed and then waxing it and polishing it, cleaning all the windows, making it look really good. Once that's done, you can resubmit your assignment too. And I wanted to actually show this in the video because it's good to be reminded. I also show you in your assignment comments how to resubmit something. Even if you're happy with the grade you got on it the first time, if you just want to update your portfolio with a better version of that thing. So the first thing you do is you save it as a PSD file. So this is still my assignment two. Then you turn off all the background elements. Now here's one thing that can happen. What if while we're clone stamping, I don't think I did this, but what if while we're clone stamping, we accidentally broke the edges so when I was doing these feathers, I accidentally, you know, at low opacity, broke the edge a little bit on my clone stamp layer. And I can see that when I have gray behind it, it's harder to see when I don't. But I don't want that there. So here's the beauty of it. The reason we do clone stamp on its own layer is then I can just go to the layer underneath it and I can use the magic wand, you know, when it's cleanly cut out. And I can then go back to the clone stamp layer. I selected the empty space in the magic wand. And then I can just delete that from the clone stamp layer. Right? So if you, if you color out of bounds on the clone stamp, you can fix that and have a really, really clean cutout. So there's no debris now anywhere around it. So we save that and then we're going to save it as a copy out of Photoshop. I've cropped to it. I could probably crop to it a little bit more to save more space. I don't need the little Pokemon anymore. So yeah, you save it as a PSD. This is assignment two. And then to turn it in as a resubmission for assignment two, you say save a copy. And in order to have it free floating, you have to save it as a PNG. PNG is an online loss compression format that supports transparency. If I saved it as a JPEG, it would fill in that empty space with white pixels. And I don't want that because I want to be able to then move this creature uh, into a landscape without a white background behind it. Okay, if I go to Canvas, and I go to assignment, this is resubmitting assignment two. And remember, you can resubmit, this is our course outline, any assignment up until the last class day. So the last day to submit any improved assignments for an improved score. But not finals week, has to be done by May 3rd. Now when you resubmit, I'm gonna show you the steps. You have to do more than just posting it to Canvas because you got to let me know that you resubmitted it. So for, I go to the assignment. I can shortcut going right to the assignment. Assignment 2 where you post it. Find my post. Do not delete anything that you have previously posted. That's a mistake students make sometimes because I want to be able to see the improvements. And it's nice for the class to see the process. So my sketch is there. Any other kind of process stuff I put is there. Leave all that there. This is what I submitted and got a grade, but maybe I got two out of three points because there are little things pointed out in the comments that could be improved about internal lighting and internal textures. All right, it's taken a little while to load because it's big. I gave him a name, Gregor the Sludge Master, and now I'm gonna title it Resubmission because this is after the deadline. And I post it just like I did the, the original time. But I use the PNG. With all of its corrections, you see the colors better. 
See that blending there? And it, it didn't take me long. It took me about 20 minutes to, to improve it, right? And that can mean the difference, especially as your skills improve, between getting a 2 out of 3 and getting a 3 out of 3. But just because you did this, that doesn't mean that Canvas told me that you did this. <laughs> so now we need to do another step. I'm just going to shrink all of these a little bit because they're a little big. So once I hit done, I can see that I've left all my original submissions and now I have my resubmission, which I think is improved. If, and if that's the case, now I want to go to the inbox and I want to find my class, in case you haven't used this before, and I want to select the course, find this course, and then you just type my last name, my first name, you'll find me, right? And then just send me a message. And that's really all you need. I resubmitted assignment number two. The message tool will tell me what class it's from, who it's from, but you can also use your name and everything. Please look at it. Now, until I get this message, car. <laughs> and now you'll see, I've actually never tried messaging myself in the inbox before. But once you send that, I'll see it in my inbox. And I won't respond to that message until I have looked at it and rescored it. And then I will send you a response. Say, thanks, got it. <laughs> and then you'll have a new score. And if I decide not to give it a higher score, I'll let you know why, you know, in my response. But usually, I can see the improvements. I'm happy to give you credit for work you do. We're just trying to get the best portfolio we can. And this, which looks, looks okay. It looks a little overall too sharp. It looks a little too colorful in different areas. Oh, there's the, the message, which tells me it's as easy as that, that I need to resubmit something. Okay, so I'll do that. So first you post it, and then you send me a message. So now we're going to work on that. So the proving ground assignment is due next class. You can see that in Canvas. It's on the 20th. And you can also see it on the course outline. But today's our big work day on it. So what's next? We've got our creature. Now we need to go back to our landscape. And I can close this. I've already saved it. The important thing is I have the PNG. Now my PSD landscape for assignment one, I'm going to bring my PNG into it. My combined single layer cutout creature. And I'll start it out just on the very top layer. And it comes in as a smart object. And it will show you the size. These are both at 350 pixels per inch. So it's showing me the exact size that these pixels are. Question? So it's just like compositing any new element. I'm just using my PNG element. The one that I submitted to Canvas, I'm just dragging that and dropping it in to assignment one. So now I've got two of them, which isn't a bad idea because this can allow me to play with some different placements. So let's play with this one first. Just without even changing the size, I can use command left bracket to start sinking it through the layers. So let's sink it behind that foreground licorice tree. Let's sink it behind those waffles. Let's sink it behind the, the, the rock candy boulders. Let's sink it behind the mountains. Right? Behind the sun. So you can also place it. You know, use your move tool. It's still a smart object. 
If I want this to be like a celestial kind of kaiju entity, maybe it's looming over, but that doesn't work that well. So I want to showcase my creature, right? At least 25%. It kind of works coming around the waffles like that. But it probably best works in the middle ground. Ah, I kind of like it in front of the waffles. Yeah, maybe I can make something work. Okay, what we can also do is we can play with the scale. So Command T, I can play with making it usually smaller and fitting in. Or bigger if, if you need to, right? But you don't want to crop a lot of your creature off. It's about showcasing the creature on this environment. So I actually like this placement quite a bit, kind of peeking behind that waffle. But I, I have a different one here. And so it's not a bad idea to try placing it two different ways. The other thing I can do besides scaling it is I can right click and flip it. And it can be like eating this licorice if I wanted it to be. Sink it behind the licorice. Maybe it's going to eat it. So that's step one. So of these two options, this one is kind of more narrative, or this one, what do you guys like better as potential? This one? So it's kind of, yeah, like barreling through. Okay. So if that's the case... I'm going to mark that green. That is my character layer. Right now it's still a smart object. And what I'll usually do is duplicate the smart object in that same position and then rasterize the duplicate. That allows me to do things like change its position, change its lighting, change its pixels, right? And then I turn off the smart object underneath. Okay, as soon as I've done that, I've added a layer to my landscape. And what I want to do now is I want to say file save as because I don't want to overwrite assignment one. So now, instead of assignment one, this is proving ground number one. Out of four proving grounds, we'll do this semester. And this is going to be the Candyland, not composite, but creaturescape. A landscape with a creature in it. And I don't want to save it to the assignment one folder anymore. I'm going to save it to the desktop as a PSD. Mark it as green. This is now my proving ground assignment. Now I just got to make it work, make it believable. So if you look at the assignment, what do we need for that? We need atmosphere, we need lighting, we need shadows. And we can do that in a non-destructive way. So we're going to learn how to do what's called a non-destructive overlay layer now. So to clean up our creature, we did dodge and burn, right? What we now want to do is be able to dodge and burn both the landscape and the creature without actually hurting the the actual pixels. So what we do is on top of our creature, we are going to make another duplicate. And we're going to double click on it. And we're going to say color overlay. And we're going to pick a color that is 50% gray. This middle gray to fill the entire thing. Then we are going to what's called rasterize that layer style. That's one way to do it. There's lots of ways to do it. We basically made a stencil in middle gray of our creature on top of our creature. Now we're going to change the blending mode of that layer from normal to overlay. And honestly, it shouldn't really change anything because I'm slightly darker than 50% gray. It just slightly darkens it. Now on this layer, which I'll mark as orange, 
for my 